Welcome to Winterby Sailing. I'm single-handing my Grind 27 around the world. I started my trip in Maine with a very cold 10-month overhaul of my entire boat. Solo sailed through the Caribbean, the Panama Canal, and 41 days alone across the Pacific. I've been cruising in French Polynesia for the last year and a half, kiting, spearfishing, freediving, and of course fixing all the things that break on my boat. Aboard the Gek, I have no fridge, water maker, fancy electronics, and my rowboat is a dinghy with a sail rig. If you're interested in seeing my daily life, check out my Instagram, at Boat Lizard. Okay, enjoy the episode. I'm starting this episode with a brief visit that I took to Maine to visit family and gather some parts and knowledge for a big refit haul-up that I'm doing to get my boat ready to sail west this season. We're going to start with sewing lee cloths with my dad, learning how to fill blisters, and then I'm going to take you on a quick visit to a project that one of my friends is working on, the restoration of a traditional wooden ship. I'm here in the shop today with my dad. We are going to sew my lee cloths. To cut some parts of this umbrella, my dad has this really cool trick where he uses a hot knife, which sort of cauterizes the edge as you go, even though we did sew all the raw edges. To sew it, my dad has this cool old sewing machine that he likes to use. It's a little finicky, but it can get through a lot of material. We used webbing on the tops of the lee cloths and also in these little patches along the bottom, which I'm going to screw through to my boat. This is like a washer backing plate made out of fabric. <laughs> It's grommet's time. So So the lee cloths were pretty straightforward to make. They're kind of just reinforced rectangles. The next thing that my dad and I did in his shop was a demonstration. My boat is covered in blisters on the hull. Blisters are little pock marks that water gets underneath the gel coat and sort of eats away at it and creates an acid, which eats little holes in the gel coat itself. Um, so when I get back to my boat, I'm going to have to fill all these blisters in. My dad is showing me the proper way to do that. I'm a little nervous about this, but that's part of being a boat owner. <laughs> Getting a lesson in how to fix blisters in the bottom of your boat with epoxy filling. <laughs> First we have to simulate the blisters. Blisters on the bottom of the boat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a nasty blister. Okay, now we have blisters. Me, and if, I mean, it's not, you don't want it to be sagging. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. Okay, so just hard enough that you can do that. Yeah, um, and as it warms up, it'll, you're gonna want to mix small batches. It's like you do that. You're gonna get a bubble on the back side. Mm -hmm. It goes down. So you wanna you wanna go both ways. Okay. Because if you do this, you're gonna have if you just go wah, yeah. you get it's gonna be a dry spot right there. Oh okay, oh yeah. Right there. So um go on and just go the other way. And then these are a little going to be, there's no way you're going to clean it up and have these flush. Okay. It can't happen. They're always going to be a little bit of a divot. Mm -hmm. But what you don't want is all this stuff. Oh, uh, okay. You want to clean all that up. It's better to have them a little bit of a cup in there mm -hmm. than to, you don't want to do this. If you had two of them, you would do this and they still hollow. But if you end up with that, oh, gonna you're going to be, oh my God, well, the sand will just be yeah. a nightmare. Um, so it's best just to just keep moving along and try to get as much up as possible. And don't worry that they're divots. Okay, because it's better than it was before. Well, then you can come back. Mm -hmm. So I'd say by the time you get around, yeah. it's going to be 
getting chewy mm -hmm. and you can just fill it. Welcome to underneath the house. <laughs> ah! An exciting place. <laughs> it is so exciting. There's all the stuff I can't live without. Yeah, this is all good stuff to have. Duct tape. Oh, remember these? Oh, I do. I just got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I show this what to the kids. What are you going to do with it? I show it to the kids. Oh, oh that's cool. Seven steps yeah. to survival. Yeah, I bring it in. It's a presentation. Inventory. Shelter. Wait, how are the oh. two people Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Play. Food. Water. Signals. This is a very important step. It is. They learn. I teach them this. Play looks like building a fire. It's play. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> That's what I do for fun. <laughs> I think my mom made this. <laughs> okay. And there's another one that we have, too. These are really good. I use these for educational tools. Here, look. This is also a very important one. How long you have to do the commentary. So I teach the kids this, too. How to recognize, avoid, and treat hypothermia. Yeah. Dress safely on land. Dress safely on the water. Right. Rain gear. Rubber boots. Rubber gloves. This clearly was not made for French Polynesia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to worry about hypothermia there as oh, much as you, I mean, <laughs> you do, but not as much. Hat rain gear. See? And then the Ooh, high calorie foods. That is good chocolate. To know. Is Ladies chocolate and gentlemen, on there? you're allowed to eat high calorie foods because it prevents hypothermia. Chocolate. Don't look at that one. What does that one say? No alcohol. Oh. May appear dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> really? Not until I drink Very this good. malt. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, these are really good. I love having these because if I don't know what to do for the day, then I can pull these out and do like cuddle position or whatever. They're really good though. All right, we're going to take a field trip north to Belfast, Maine, a beautiful little coastal town. The husband of a good friend of mine co-owns a wooden boat restoration slash building company, Clark and Isley, and they are currently working on the Mirwald project. They are restoring a traditional wooden boat, and let's hear more from the mouth of the beast himself, Tim, the man, the red-bearded, fearsome. All right, we're just gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, okay. down here, down. Hi. This is the schooner A.J. Meerwald. So the Meerwald was built in 1928 in um, along the Delaware Bay. She's one of the last of her kind left. The Delaware Bay oyster fishery was one of the largest in the world at, at that time, in the early 1900s. Uh, there was an entire fleet of oyster fishing schooners out of the uh, Morris River which is where this boat still calls home. Um, the boat is now owned by Bayshore Center at Bivalve, which is a nonprofit educational organization that has an historic converted oyster shed, uh, which is now which now serves as an education center. And they have a dock where the AJ Mirwald is tied up, um, and they have uh, youth programming um, that teaches local history and ecology and environmental awareness. Um, so that's what the boat has done for the last 30 years. She was restored in the mid-90s to return her to her original configuration as an oyster fishing schooner. Um, there's several of these schooners still fishing down in that region. All of them have been converted over time as fishing technology advanced. Uh, they did away with the sail rigs, they put inboard engines and changed the way that the boats fished and the equipment that they used. So the, the oyster schooners that are still around today would only be recognizable in the, their general hull shape. Um, so the Meerwald was saved in the late 80s, early 90s, restored to her original configuration as a fishing schooner and is now used to conduct the educational program. Um, so it's been almost 30 years since her first restoration, so we're now doing another big round of work. Um, she's got 30 years of wear and tear, 
So um, basically we're replacing everything at the deck level. Uh, a new deck, new bulwarks and rails, new cabin trunks. Um, she's getting a whole new transom, whole new stern section. Um, so that's basically what we're up to. Yeah, there's one right here. Oh, bad things are gonna happen, Joey. Just do it. I don't go down there. Like this is new and this is not. How can you tell? Um, because these holes are freshly cut and the paint is fresh and like the corners are fresh. Um, yeah, but they they've done a like the original scope of the project was they were going to replace most of the deck and deck structures, and then they also realized they had to replace the transom, which is what Mike is working on. Perfect. Yeah. The last can yellow cedar, you really, we got really, really lucky with all this stuff. Yeah, look at how tight that green is. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> the fridge is an epoxy warmer because refrigerators are really well insulated to keep things cold. And so what they've done is the fridge is unplugged and there's just a light bulb in there that keeps it at temperature to keep the epoxy from freezing. So cool. Yeah. Clever boys. <laughs> okay, very fun field trip that I was able to take that day. If you are interested in seeing more of what um, Clark and Isley is doing, their Instagram account is there at the bottom here. And um, feel free to check out whatever else they're doing. They're always up to something cool in Maine and beyond. Uh, and now we are heading back to French Polynesia. I said a tearful farewell to my family, hopped on the plane. Two days later, I was back on my boat in Raiatea. I just arrived home to my boat about an hour ago after a grueling, almost three day trip to get back here. And I'm pretty tired, but trying to unpack at least two of my three bags. Uh, so the first bag was just my carry-on stuff, so it was mostly personal items. Second bag is here. So this is what was in the second bag. Um, this is mostly stuff for my haul out. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the third bag that I might deal with tomorrow. In this corner, well, it's getting dark, isn't it? Hello. Do you want to work? Do you want to work? Gonna work. Do you not want to work? Please work. La, 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 la. There we go. Just sing at it. That's how it fixes things. I'm so tired. Alright, over here I think this is going to be my project area, so I'm gonna lay everything out here that I'm gonna need in the next two weeks. I'm estimating this haul out is gonna be about two weeks. Um, I hope that's a little on the generous side of the amount of time it's gonna take. I hope it takes less than that, but realistically it might take that long. Um, so that's what I'm just gonna be, that's the number I'm gonna be working with. Uh, and as I start planning things out, I think I'm gonna find that it's probably pretty accurate because now I'm thinking just doing my haul is gonna be probably four or five days. That's already almost a week. And then a day for the through hauls and all the hoses under the, cockpit um and the stern gland that can probably all be done in a day um yeah i don't know don't want to think about it yet right now i'm just thinking about unpacking so yep that's my next task is to just unpack and sort of organize everything um and then bucket shower in the cockpit and early to bed one of my friends came by with bananas right after i got here it was so sweet of her and um she also brought me a bag. There's a bottle of wine and there's some hummus and crackers in it. So that's going to be my dinner. Not the wine though. I'm so dehydrated. Don't eat any alcohol. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to get through this and then we'll see about this giant one. So I ended up putting away 
almost the entire second bag and then I kind of hit a wall and needed to eat. <clears throat> this is what my project corner looks like. I'll show you more tomorrow morning. Uh, I am going to do a project tonight and that is the fixing my burner project. So as you can see, this guy has a hole in it. Um, this is really cheap metal. The stove is only three years old. I bought it brand new. <clears throat> and my dad was helping me source new burners. Oh yeah, this is from the stove. Uh, but he just couldn't find replacement burners and I went through, I went through so many iterations of trying to figure out how I could fix this thing. And finally the best solution we came up with, because it's such high heat, right? That's the trouble. Um, obviously I could get it welded somehow, somewhere, or I could use this, um, gasketing cement and stove sealer, and what I'm going to do is glue a coin to the hole with this, and that fixes the whole problem. I don't have to pay someone to weld it, um, and we'll see if it works. So the hole is actually this entire thing. I'm not going to knock the rust out um, because the coin is going to span here and it's better to have more material in there. The coin I chose is the 20 franc coin. This is the equivalent of about um, two cents. And it has a lovely Napoleon Rass on the back of it, which we love. And it's a pretty perfect size. I'll just go over there like that. Um, just so that this sealant doesn't leak through and stick this guy to the wrong thing, I'm putting a piece of paper behind it. So if it glues it to the paper, I can just burn the paper off um, and it'll be fine. But this is just so that it, it has a point where it stops and doesn't just drip through the bottom of this guy. Okay, I should have guessed this, but I actually have to file down the top of this burner because I need a flat surface to stick the coin to, but my excuse is that I have been traveling for three days and I'm exhausted, but I really want to be able to make coffee tomorrow morning, so that's my motivation. Alright, this guy's filed down and everything has been acetoned. And now I'm going to put the paper back behind here and then stick this guy on. Okay, this is insanely messy. Poop. Alright, I'm not pushing it down, I'm just letting the weight of the coin um, do what it needs to do because I want to leave some of this sealer sealant in between the two things. Uh, now I'm just going to clean up around the edges and then I'll let it dry. Okay, finished product, it's on. I've cleaned up as much of around the edges as I can without damaging the set of this. I'm just gonna let it sit overnight. <laughs> I'm using my contacts case and this little thingy thing uh, as supports because this guy has two legs on the bottom um, and I need it to sit flat against this piece of paper so that if any goop runs through, it stops here. Uh, so I'll just leave this for tonight. I'm about to go to bed anyway, I'm sure. And we'll see how you do. Check you tomorrow. Make some cafe. Thanks for watching this week's video. Ooh, sorry. These are prescription and I I am not cool enough to wear sunglasses in an exit video. Um, I put out new videos every two weeks on Mondays on YouTube and for my patrons you guys get a snack on the weeks I don't put out a full length YouTube video. To become a patron, my patron is patreon.com slash I am reading through journals of sailing trips that I've taken and answering any specific questions you guys have about pieces of my boat, how they work, other things that I do, whatever you want, with limitations obviously. Um, oh, it's hot and my brain is fried. Uh, la la bamba, what else do I usually say here? I'm... Thank you Tish, the lovely Tish, for helping me get these videos scheduled. Thank you guys, lovely you guys, for your comments. I like reading them. I try to read them all whenever I have access to internet, and um, I can think of what else I usually say. Shirts, shirts, buy your shirts, coming fresh, coming fast, uh, and the link in the description below. 
There's a link to a website where you can purchase Windippy sailing shirts. We can be matching. We can be twins. I have tie-dye ones. I have sweatshirts. I have mugs. I have stickers. I can't even remember what else. There's a lot. It's all cool. Bye now. Bye fast. All right. I will see you guys next week. Pew!